There are several more gameplay related news about Assassin's Creed Mirage coming from a variety of different sources and in this video we're going to discuss all of them including some news about the Assassin's tools and how to obtain them in the game, some more news about the setting and map including its size and what can be found within it, a lot of news and commentary about the animations in the game and a few descriptions of different ways that the demo of the gameplay trailer was played in front of a number of journalists. In the video we're also going to discuss the recent rumors about a potential remake of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which have been recently corroborated by different sources, so let's not wait any longer and let's dive into the recent Assassin's Creed news. And we start with the recent news about a potential remake of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. The rumor broke out a few days ago through Kotaku, which reported that two of their sources familiar with Ubisoft's strategy plans mentioned that a remake, not a remaster, of the famously acclaimed pirate-based game of the franchise is apparently in its earliest stages of development and will likely take a number of years to be completed. The report is mentioning that a team at Ubisoft Singapore is heavily involved in the development of the game, which is pretty interesting considering that Ubisoft Singapore is also the lead studio behind Skull and Bones, the live service pirate game that's been in development hell for so many years. The team working on Skull and Bones also reportedly discussed if it was possible to bring back Skull and Bones towards a game that's more like Black Flag, which would potentially mean adding elements of co-op exploration and hand-to-hand -hand combat instead of just resource gathering mechanics and PvP naval battles like Skull and Bones is currently being marketed, but at this point it seems like Skull and Bones and this new, rumored Black Flag remake are still two very distinct games and I guess the Ubisoft Singapore really needs to get Skull and Bones out of the way one way or another in order to focus on this new Assassin's Creed project, very much like Ubisoft as a whole has recently decided to pivot more and more towards Assassin's Creed as a franchise. The rumor was also corroborated by industry insider and leaker Tom Henderson, who also confirmed through their insider gaming website that they were able to independently verify the game is in development, although it has seemingly only just been greenlit. Nonetheless, the news about the remake of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag brought insider gaming to mention that Ubisoft is now working one way or another on 11 Assassin's Creed games, be they confirmed or rumored, and make it 12 if we also add the game being developed in partnership with. Netflix. So apparently Ubisoft declined to comment on all of this, according to Kotaku's article, but they didn't take into account the wild account that is Ubisoft Latino America, which shared this picture, which basically says the rumors are true, Mirage releases on October the 12th. Anyway, we'll see how that pans out, it's still so many years away from us if it really exists, while instead Mirage is just a few months short of its release date, so let's focus on that, starting with some gameplay and animation related news, coming from the reports of several gaming sites that were able to see the game in action at Ubisoft Forward a few weeks ago. According to many reports, within the game's philosophy, the focus will be put on stealth and finding ways to get to a target through the various opportunities at the player's disposal, like bribing the guards, causing distractions, etc., before actually assassinating the target and then escaping, hopefully unnoticed. In all of this, combat will be a second option when stealth goes wrong, but still the biggest amount of effort in terms of new animations has actually been put in the assassinations and combat sequences, while for what we've seen, Apart from the new or returning ingredients, the animations for the basics of parkour are pretty much the same from the previous games of the franchise. In an interview with 4GamerNet, associate animation director Benjamin Potts admitted that some animation assets might have been reused for Mirage, even though the combat animations have been redesigned as this game mostly involves fighting using a scimitar, which required doing motion capture with trainers and choreographers who specialized in such weapon type, but those weren't the only sources of inspiration for the combat design of the game. When talking to videogames.si.com, Potts mentioned that, along with the original AC games, the dev team looked at other points of reference, such as, get this, the swordplay of Samurai and Jedi. Thus, the animation team actually did live sword training to understand how to handle weapons in an efficient and natural way in order to keep the fluidity of movement and speed things up from Valhalla. In more practical terms, Mirage's combat system will not only be based fully on AC1's precision-based counter-attack system, but it will retain part of the hitbox system from the recent Assassin's Creed games, along with the finishing moves that we are now used to see in the franchise, while again, the focus in Pot's work 
rewards will be on fluidity, as in, even if the game retains the hitbox system, players will still have to be precise and efficient with their moves and try to move from one attack to another as quickly as possible. Still, judging by what we have seen, and it seems like other websites are reporting the same, the scimitar and dagger combination will be the one and only set of weapons used in combat, while the hidden blade so far has appeared to be exclusive for assassination attempts and not as the parrying tool that Ezio used in the past games. Associate Animation Director Benjamin Potts also commented on the Assassin's Focus ability, which, using a specific adrenaline or concentration bar, allows Basim to assassinate multiple guards in succession, which devs described as a representation of Basim's agility, but many fans actually called a de facto teleport assassination. Potts commented that his team had come up with many ideas and prototypes about this ability. At first it was too powerful an ability and so it had to be limited by building up the gauge by succeeding in stealth and performing stealth kills. Also Potts added that assassin focus needs to be activated considering the end of the ability animation. If the player wants to continue being stealthy after performing the kills, they will have to consider if they are going to be spotted after the end of the animation's ability, so at least there is going to be a strategic twist to it. Keeping to the gameplay aspects of the game, we do know that the tools or assassins tools are going to play a major role in our stealth sessions within Mirage. As we know, the tools will include the smoke bombs, the throwing knives, the poison traps, the noisemakers and the blow darts and will be able to upgrade them and even apply modifiers to their effects, but all these tools won't be available from the start. In fact, they will be available only after every main target assassination. More specifically, as reported by WCCF tech.com, our main character Basim will be able to gain ranks within the Hidden Ones Brotherhood, but he will only do so after killing a main target and this will also allow him to go back to the Assassin Bureau that commissioned the assassination, report to the Rafik or Bureau Leader and obtain one of the 5 stealth tools in the game. Moreover, Basim can unlock each of these 5 tools in any order, giving players a slightly different experience than their friends based on how they progress and what kind of tools they choose after each of the main assassinations. We also got some new info and commentary on the setting of the game that is for the most part the city of Baghdad. According to GamePro.de, during a press event that their journalists participated in, it was mentioned that Baghdad will be roughly the size of Paris in Assassin's Creed Unity or Constantinople in Assassin's Creed Revelations, that it will consist of a total of 4 districts, which we already knew, and that there will also be a surrounding area around Baghdad featuring two other smaller cities, one of which we suppose will be Al Anbar, as we already mentioned in our videos. As reported within an interview on IGN, within in Baghdad in this time period people would come from all kinds of countries and walks of life, so the city in the game will also try and portray that with a diversity in the characters and NPCs who as much as possible are going to be voiced by actors originating from the same country or territory they come from in the game. But Baghdad will also be a host of a good chunk of the side content in the game, such as the world events which will be making a comeback from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where Basim will come across something happening in the city of Baghdad and will have to undertake some kind of mini mission about it. There will also be side missions like assassination missions, stealing missions, rescuing missions and more, which will have optional objectives like the good old 100% synchronization and which will be designed, in a dev's words, to support Basim's character evolution in that historical setting in that world. Before we wrap up the video, by having a look at the various reports after Ubisoft Forward, we did notice how many press outlets and YouTubers were shown hands off, the same demo from the recent gameplay trailer as it was played in front of them by different demoists and because of that, some of these reports described a number of different approaches compared to the one we saw in the trailer, so let's discuss some of them as we have a look at the trailer. For example, a different approach to the demo was described by TheGamer.com, which reported that when escaping the two guards right after the first stealth kill, Basim stunned them with a smoke bomb instead of pulling down the shelf to block their path. After the bit of the demo in the Hidden Ones Bureau, the demoist here took another approach. He used a noisemaker to distract and sneak past the guards outside rather than using a blow dart to sedate them. Instead of entering from the front side of the palace's wall, he climbed around the back of the compound, noticing a boat tied to a nearby dock. Instead of fighting his way out after eliminating the target, he headed for that boat and made a quick escape across the river. 
Easy Allies instead reports that the run of the assassination contract that they saw was cleaner, as in the demoist never got Basim spotted, but most importantly, they took a different path to enter the Prince's Palace through active social stealth, by bribing a nearby group of people, maybe the one we had already spotted, and walking with them through the front door. In fact, as you might remember, Mirage will present two types of crowd blending. The systemic blending, where Basim can join a standing group of people or sit on benches with other NPCs, and the more active blending, which will require Basim to actually spend some tokens in order to bribe a group of people to move towards specific directions as he blends within them, which is what was seemingly done by the demoist in front of the members of the Easy Allies channel. The demoist that showed the game to the journalist from PCGamer.com instead did it in a completely different way. They almost immediately got spotted by a guard and scrambled to hide in a bush, but it was too late. A fight broke out in the same garden where the demo shows the blow dart tool, causing the demoist to barely escape the fight alive and quickly scale the tower to kill the marksman as in the official demo. Once the demoist killed that guard, Basim used his eagle but because the compound was still on alert, the eagle was quickly disabled again, which means that if we get spotted we'll likely be on our own until the dust settles. The chaos in this demo carried into the center of the compound where the video shows off Basim's assassin focus ability which instead, in this case, turned into a huge brawl ending with the eventual assassination of the target. So in that case it was much less choreographed but the journalist was able to see more combat than most which he described to be quick and lethal. And quick and lethal it does seem to be, as we saw in some of the trailers for Mirage we have seen up until now, including the most recent gameplay trailer for which we have prepared a full breakdown of all the new and info and details that we could gather. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.